So now I want to talk about uh, some of our options for how to choose a, a gifted screener or a, a universal screener and then some details on um, your options. If you're interested in language reduced um, and nonverbal administration, COGAT Form 7 and 8 offers those. So we'll talk about that. So in addition to some of the issues I talked about with nonverbal, um, the single format assessments earlier, um, the problem with the way that a single task measures ability is that it's influenced by uh, so much by those specific skills of being able to solve like a figural analogy. So this figure is representing how we think about uh, human abilities. So if you look at the top of this figure, you'll see that general intelligence is defined by performance on all of these broad abilities here. So it includes fluid intelligence or general reasoning, which is what COGAP's designed to measure. But it also includes things like crystallized intelligence, which is like knowledge and factual knowledge and other um, broad abilities. So general intelligence is defined by all the broad abilities being averaged up. So you can only measure general intelligence by measuring lots of different broad abilities and getting kind of a composite score. The so same way, each of these broad abilities is defined by the narrow abilities. So there's way more than this, even 69. There's tons of narrow abilities that define um, each of the broad abilities. And again, to get a good measure of fluid intelligence or general reasoning, you need to measure different forms of reasoning so that you can average away all those specific influences of you know, familiarity or a particular skill with analogies. So uh, a test like COGAD is called multidimensional because we measure general ability with multiple formats. So the benefit of that is it gives students uh, multiple opportunities to demonstrate ability. Uh, it, it better represents, so any single format underrepresents the construct of general reasoning. A multidimensional test like COGAT better represents, adequately represents the construct. So instead of just measuring figural reasoning skills, it measures reasoning skills with words, reasoning skills with numbers, as well as the abstract reasoning. So it's just a better representation of general reasoning abilities. It will give you a better composite. Um, like I said, if you only have one format, it only gives students one chance to understand and master the task. And really importantly is because there's only one task, it's actually easier to be coached on one task than for a full task like COGAT with nine different formats. So the impact of preparation having coaching or prior test exposure is greater on a single format than a multidimensional test. So given that uh, COGAT offers a multidimensional measure of general reasoning ability, as well as the three um, for, um, areas of reasoning, so even the verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal are actually multidimensional in themselves because we have three different formats per battery. So the verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal reasoning measures that we get are also very interpretable and useful in um, planning instruction. So that's a big benefit. But if you're still concerned about the verbal loading, we actually, in developing Form 7 and 8, we're very aware of the need to better assess um, all students, but especially including English learner students. And so the formats, especially for K2, are all nonverbal with the exception of just one test, which is sentence completion. Um, so in fact, if you, and we have an option for eliminating the sentence completion, you can actually have an all nonverbal assessment of general reasoning ability that provides an excellent measure of general reasoning ability because it averages across all these different domains, uh, but it also provides specific measures of verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal ability, which you can use in those different combinations we were talking about in the previous section. So just to run through real quickly what our formats look like, uh, these are the picture-based verbal reasoning items that we developed for Form 7 and 8. And you see that with the exception of sentence completion, they're completely nonverbal. So the students are using their verbal, their conceptual knowledge to solve the problems, but they don't need to have a shared language with the examiner. To, um, to engage with the items. Um, and then for sentence completion, we have both English and Spanish question prompts. So you do have opportunities there. If you have a large number of uh, Spanish-speaking English learners, that's an opportunity to give the complete battery to all of your students. The quantitative battery, again, is completely nonverbal. So students are able to engage in quantitative reasoning without any shared language and um, at the K2 levels without any kind of formal mathematical representation. 
Uh, the nonverbal battery looks much the same as Form 6 in the earlier forms. It's, of course, nonverbal uh, with no shared language. And so it's got three formats. So instead of just having an analogies type format or a matrices format, it also gives students the opportunity to demonstrate reasoning with paper folding and classification. And so it gives a better indicator of nonverbal reasoning uh, or figural reasoning, really. Um, than any one of these formats would provide alone. So if you have uh, English learners who are not Spanish speakers, you have the opportunity to use the alt verbal scale, alternative verbal scale. And basically what this does is it just eliminates the sentence completion test. Uh, so the two scores are actually very highly correlated uh, with even removing that one test. But the important thing is that we observe that when we use the alternative verbal, we actually identify more English learners, which is what we hope would happen. Um, so if you use the, if English learners are 5.5% of the population, as they were in our sample, uh, we identified 3.1 using the complete nonverbal verbal measure with the sentence completion included, uh, that increased to 5.4, which is essentially um, perfect representation when we eliminate the sentence completion task. So um, we're very excited about the opportunities that alternative verbal offers for um, K through two testing. Uh, if you don't have um, the time or the resources for the full COGAT, or if you're looking for a screening form that's quick and efficient, we have the COGAT screening form that was new for form seven, and both seven and eight offer this, and they're distinct screening forms, uh, different items. Uh, and basically, it just takes the analogies format from each of the three COGAT batteries. So for K through two, it's completely nonverbal because the analogy formats are picture-based. Uh, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to administer. And if you want to do the complete um, test, so say you want to do the screener with everyone and uh, completer for the full battery for students who are identified, you can do that. Um, in online testing, it's especially easy to complete the testing and to get the three battery scores. If you do the screener, you just get one composite estimate. For grades three and above, if you're interested in a fully nonverbal screener, you can still do the Alt-B approach, which basically drops the verbal analogies. At ages um, nine and above, it's really difficult to measure verbal reasoning without using words. Um, so we weren't able to continue the picture-based uh, picture analogies. But if you drop that subtest, you'll have two other um, subtests that are fully nonverbal and it will give you an estimate of the composite score uh, based on that shorter screener. So that's still uh, an opportunity that you could use if you're interested in all verbal. Uh, but for most students, you'll want to use the complete screener of the three sub, uh, subtests. 